It is 4 o'clock now on your Thursday afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Green. And I'm Kim Christensen. Hot and dry conditions, the kind of weather we've been waiting for, but not really when you're talking about what firefighters are dealing with. They've been busy around the metro area. Right now in Jefferson County, West Metro firefighters are mopping up at least four small fires at the Fox Hollow Golf Course. That's in Lakewood. This is off Morrison Road, just west of Kipling. One of the fires was also on the Bear Creek Lake Park property. Some people playing golf had their game interrupted. They were told to evacuate. There are structures and homes nearby, but West Metro says they weren't threatened. And it seems like they got ahead of it. Sky 9 is over that area right now. You can see a little bit of smoke still. And, you know, it is dry in many places. So we're going to update you if we learn anything more about a possible cause and any other kind of an update on this. Again, four small fires in the Fox Hollow Golf Course area. In Boulder, you may have seen smoke as firefighters were doing prescribed burns. This was the area of 75th and Valmont, just north of Valmont Reservoir. Multiple agencies were out monitoring the conditions during this burn. The goal is to cut down on possible fire fuels throughout Boulder, especially as we get into that more active time for fire season. Deputies in Douglas County arrested one person in connection to two small fires in the Highlands Ranch area. Flames sparked near South Broadway, just north of Highlands Ranch Parkway, just after 7 this morning. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office says someone possibly experiencing homelessness may have started those fires. It's not clear if the fires were intentional or accidental. A charter bus caught fire this afternoon just before 1 o'clock. This is video off the off-ramp at Ridgegate Partway from I-25 as heavy black smoke quickly filled the area. South Metro Fire Rescue says the driver was the only one on the bus at the time and was able to get safely get off. No one else was hurt. South Metro firefighters quickly put out the fire. If you look down in the right-hand corner, down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see 75 degrees. And if you look above that, all you see are blue sky right above the skyline of Denver right now. Just the second time we've been into the 70s, but we're well into the 70s. But what Kim was talking about with those fires, red flag warnings for Denver and most of eastern Colorado, bring us to Kathy Sabin for more on our warm weather and some of the problems that come with it. That's right, Tom. The warmest day of the season so far today. I think I've seen 76 downtown, 73 at DIA, and we've still got a lot of daylight yet, so those numbers could go higher. And the big story, I think, this time tomorrow will be the wind and the fire danger. We need to be so careful. The winds are really going to increase out of the south. And along the Front Range foothills and over some of the mountain passes, we could see gusts to 70 miles per hour tomorrow and Saturday. The number 74 at DIA now, 82 in Lamar. How about that? 77 in Greeley, 74 in Fort Collins. Average high this time of year is 60. Well, we've got 70s to end the week, but a weekend storm will bring cooler weather and the chance for rain and snow as we head into Saturday morning. Mid 70s this hour, low 80s again in southeastern Colorado, but those numbers could go higher as winds increase out of the south. Red flag warnings posted tomorrow for Denver and all of eastern Colorado. Critical fire weather with humidity values lower than 10% for some areas and winds out of the south to 40 and 50 miles per hour. All part of a Pacific storm system that's headed toward Colorado. We're seeing the increase in high and mid-level clouds. We have a mild night tonight, a warmer day tomorrow, but as this low swings into the Great Basin and right over the Front Range, we are going to see rain and snow develop here on Saturday. No worries tonight and no worries tomorrow in terms of precipitation. The changes arrive early Saturday morning. Mid 70s as Tom mentioned now will drop 10 degrees after sunset. Will we see record high temperatures? We'll talk about that and what all of this means for the Rockies home opener tomorrow. All right, Kathy, thanks very much. We turn to a mother who's gone missing. She hasn't been home in more than two days. Well, now the community is trying to find her. Millican police say 51 year old Rebecca Greenup hasn't been seen since Tuesday. Nine News reporter Brianna Clark is in Firestone right now as the community is searching for her. Brianna. Yeah, people have been coming through here all day asking, what can I do to help? Rebecca's daughter tells me her mom was last seen at that bank. She made a transaction and then she left. And what happened after that is a mystery. They're going to go to Johnstown and Milliken. We haven't been up there yet. Friends, family and strangers searching for someone who vanished. We don't have a choice. We have to bring her home either way. And I'd prefer to bring her home and take her to dinner instead of 
the opposite. Danny Templeton yeah. can't find her mom. Security video shows 51 year old Rebecca Greenup leaving their home in Milliken on Tuesday just before noon. I don't want to think of anything negative. I don't want to manifest any negativity. She was spotted again here about an hour later at a drive through ATM off I-25 and Firestone Boulevard. She made a deposit. And no one has heard from her since. Danny and her friends continue to gather here at the Best Western in Firestone, passing out flyers and searching the area. Her phone pinged. Uh, we have a general area radius of about two and a half miles. Now it's a waiting game as law enforcement gets involved. They told us to stop doing like ground searches for now because they're going to get the dogs out and they don't want us to interfere with walking over anything or putting our scent on anything. But there is one scent they do need. It's just these. Rebecca's pajamas. These are what she was wearing on Monday night. Uh, they were just laying on the bed waiting for her to come home. Now they're in a Ziploc ready for the canine search team. Everybody has been so helpful and it, I don't know, my heart is like this big. It's, it's Fantastic. Do you have any flyers? I do, yes. Strangers are seeing Danny's Facebook post and they're stepping in to spread the word. Okay, I'm going to go over the business. Okay, here. thank okay, you. Sorry. It's hard to stay positive when you're holding back tears. We want her home. There's, there's no reason for her to be gone. They're hoping Rebecca is somewhere out here. Rebecca is a mother of two and a grandmother to three. Danny tells me her mom doesn't go anywhere without informing the family. All right, so this is what police are looking for. It's a brown Hyundai Tucson with Colorado plates. That's what Rebecca was last seen driving. If you guys know any information, have any information, call police. In Firestone, Brianna Clark, 9 News. Well, it's a tight knit community, smaller community, so it's easy kind of to get the word out, but still it's, it feels like they don't have a whole lot to go on right now, Brianna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're thinking that she's somewhere in this area within a two mile radius. They're calling her phone. It still rings. It pings here and the fear is that she is not here. Oh my goodness. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. We'll stay on top of it. Today, Denver's Department of Housing Stability searched the former Doubletree Hotel, the one that has turned into a shelter for the unhoused. They were looking for weapons or other prohibited items. This comes after two people were killed there, and another woman was shot over the last few weeks. Since those shootings, the city's installed several security measures for safety, including metal detectors, a badging system, more security personnel, and a stronger presence from Denver police. The Department of Housing Stability says police officers were there as they searched every room. I need to do a sweep of the entire building just to make sure that there's no bad stuff in here, that there's no, no weapons primarily, just so that we could ensure the safety of the residents and the guests in the greater community. We're going through all the rooms. There's uh, multiple security inside. There's multiple uh, DPD officers to ensure safety and security. Uh, the room checks are, be, are being administered by you know, security personnel. It's more of a trauma-informed approach. And the Department of Housing Stability says it has a guest services agreement that lets them inspect any room at any time, but they didn't tell Nine News exactly how many rooms they did search or what they found. Wheatridge police say a woman has serious injuries after a car hit her this afternoon. Happened just after 2 p.m. at 44th and Miller near I-70 and Kipling. Police say a woman is walking in a crosswalk when a car hit her. This happened outside Compass Montessori School, but they say police say that did not involve any students. Police say the driver stayed on the scene. They cited the driver for failing to yield. It's the second time today that a car hit someone in a crosswalk. The first happened just before 8 this morning at 14th and Spear. Paramedics say they took that person to the hospital for treatment. The driver did stay on the scene as well. Investigators are deciding if charges should be filed. Today, people across the country were remembering. They honored Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It's 56 years now to the day since his assassination in Memphis. Here in Denver, former, former Mayor Wellington Webb and his wife hosted a wreathling ceremony at the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I Have a Dream Monument in Denver City Park. Pueblo and Aurora also held wreathling ceremonies today. And in Atlanta, Dr. King's daughter and other relatives laid a wreath there in his honor. It was April of 1968 when Dr. King was standing on the balcony at the Lorraine Motel when he was shot and killed. 
This year, the event comes after the death of Dr. King's son, Dexter, back in January.